As I'm writing this, Noel and I are celebrating our one year and one month anniversary of leaving life as we knew it completely behind and starting to live and travel full time on the road. And this, this trip right here, was the event that started it all. This is August of last year. This is part two of the story of a very special road trip that my mom and I took together. A road trip that would crack me open and make me come to terms with some things that I had been avoiding for years. That when I confronted them, led me to completely change my life. This part of our trip is where things really started to unravel for me where I began to accept that I was like that frog they teach you about, that I was sitting in a pot on a stove and wouldn't acknowledge that the water around me, my life, was gradually coming to a boil and that I needed to make a change. Being on the road and away from my normal routine, I found that a lot of the aspects and ways of thinking that kept me from really truly feeling the extent of how out of alignment I really was disintegrated. It was here that I had to admit that I've been living my life primarily out of fear. That even with the consequences I was experiencing to my mental health, my nervous system, and my physical health, that I had been pushing away the signs that I needed to make a change. And maybe you can relate to this. What I would do every time I felt or noticed them is I would intellectualize the signs and my feelings. I would invalidate what I was feeling and would prioritize doing what I thought was the right thing or the financially smart thing or do what I thought was safest. And because of that, I was seeing that I was no longer living my own life. Cosmia, and the yellow one is Salsify. That yellow one. And there's another little yellow something. It looks like a yellow violet or something. I don't know maybe oh my god, this tree. The thing is, when we don't listen to our own inner knowing, when we don't listen to our anchored impulses and we try to come up with mental and logical reasons why we should or shouldn't do something or listen to that part of ourselves, we're self-abandoning. And it got to a point where my system knew I couldn't do it any longer. Thank you.
So it was out here, between the rocks and the sea. My system had just had enough. And I want to say that it was as easy as I finally decided to make a change, but no, it was way more than that. Coming to a space of completion with this came after years of doing the inner work. And now it was just time. And what that meant was that my whole system was finally ready to fully accept that doing the right or the smart or the safe thing didn't matter anymore. That I needed myself more than any of that. That I needed my destiny, my own non-linear life path more than any other future. And while I could have spent all day on that beach, we had to keep going because the redwoods were calling. Our road turned east and once again led us back into the forest. We weren't using our phones to guide us, just some directions from the shopkeeper of the little store we stopped into, so we had no idea when we would arrive at the next place. But as soon as we got there, we immediately knew.
It's nearly impossible to describe this experience other than to simply say that I felt I was in the presence of gods. A timeless consciousness and wisdom of the natural world that was alive and present and sacred. The healing and the medicine that I received here, I will never forget. The natural world is what is true and what is real, and you can't not be held by it in that way when you're in it. And because of that, I was shown how to be at home within myself in a way that I hadn't in a really long time. As we drove to the last hotel that had an available room for the night, I remember feeling that something had fundamentally shifted for me. I knew that there was no going back. The next day, we returned to the forest in the morning, but I didn't film. I just needed that time to be present and have a good cry. And then it was back to the coast. The question that I was grappling with was, now that I know that I can't go back to my old life, in that I can no longer avoid making the changes I know are necessary, where do I start? What does that even look like? And that's when I remembered that it's not about having it all figured out. It's just about taking the step that's right in front of me. You take a step and the next one reveals itself. That's how the mystery works. So for example, I knew I had to leave my life as I knew it in the country, that I couldn't live there anymore. And even though I had nothing else beyond that figured out of what I would do or where I would go, I had my first step. And that's all that mattered. In my time in university, I studied myths from around the world. And a consistent theme or symbol in myth is a threshold. When I watched this footage back, when I watch it now, and I see this shot, I see the threshold I was walking through. And there's this very literal metaphor in watching myself effortlessly follow my anchored impulses and choose a direction to explore to go one way and see what was there and then shift directions and go another way. That it's really that simple. You don't know what you're gonna find, but that's the point. Destiny lies in the unknown of the mystery and our inner knowing is always attuned to the next step on that journey. And that doesn't mean that we always feel like we know or are certain. There are times that are perfectly normal where we are meant to be suspended in not knowing. There's nothing to figure out. Just listen. Yeah, I don't know. Not 
me. I've never been here before. This journey was coming to an end. Our flight out of Oakland was later that afternoon, and as usual, we chose the scenic route to get back to the airport, which turned out to be three hours on one of the windiest roads I have ever driven on. But something about how twisting and turning and intense it was felt appropriate because it felt like we were coming out of some mythic or magic realm. So of course, the transition out had to be an adventure in itself. It's really wild to watch this now because little did I know that only months from this moment of getting out of our rental car, that my whole life would change. That everything I owned would be in boxes, that I had quit my job, that Noel and I would be leaving the life we knew so well, and that we would be setting out for over a year of living full time on the road in our Volvo station wagon and with our two cats traveling across the continent. And not only that, that this new life would be a journey to nowhere specific, but where I would dive into a deep learning and a healing of coming home to myself. Thank you so much for watching. Wherever you are in the world, may you trust the perfect timing of your journey and discover the way to lean into and listen to your inner knowing that will guide you to living in alignment in your own destiny. Sending my love. Cows! Cows! I didn't see them. Stealthy cows.